Have you been in a situation where you're talking about something to invest in, something to build, another online cost to build, to, you know, to create, and you're talking to people who are maybe close to you or friendly with you, and you discover that even though it seems like all of you have a goal, you like you want to make more money, you want to be financially free, but you soon spot them spoiling the vibe with the way they think, like that gets me crazy. Sometimes I just, you see me this time, this time myself, like, you're not ready. This guy is not ready. This bay is not ready. Like, how could we be talking about something that will give us a lot of money? And then you're talking about things like, ah, but well, people don't really like to buy XYZ. And uh, even though you say you're thirsty, but mm, there's really no money in the country right now. People might be investing more in food to stay alive than to. Excuse me. So anyway, let's get into this video. This things are the things that are negative mindsets about money that keeps people away from wealth. Like you can't build wealth, it's not magic. You can't build wealth if you have any of these 10 negative mindsets I'm gonna share. And the truth is people who are engulfed in this kind, in this kind of behaviors genuinely do not know that they are sabotaging themselves. They don't really know. So I understand, which is why I'm doing this video really, you know, because you can genuinely be sabotaging yourself. I mean, I've had my own fair share of that myself. It took me to go for therapy, for trainings, for to learn neuro-linguistic patterning, to be able to understand certain things about myself and begin to shut them off. You know, things that weren't serving me. So I understand. But then it's one thing not to know, it's another thing to be told and then you don't do anything about it. Which is why I think that we need to dump this if you're going to make money. The number one mindset or money block that keeps people away from making wealth, even though they are working so hard, is the scarcity mindset. They just believe that, oh my God, this one is scarce. So if we get it, they, they tend towards hoarding. You know, like, oh my God, not a lot of people who pay for this. Not a lot of people who pay for this. Oh, since we have been able to sell this, let's not bother marketing anymore. Let's just keep the money. You know, so you, they keep themselves away from, from investing, for instance. They keep themselves away from making more sales just because they think, oh my God, oh my God, let's, let's just keep the one. Let's can the one we have and sit on the can. You know, that principle of sitting on the can is a bad way to think, guys. It is. It's even scary thinking about it because I know about abundance. The world is full of abundance. Look at everything God made. It is an abundance, rather. Look at the sea, the water, the water body. Look, look at the sand at the beach. Look at the birds. Look at the stars. Look at everything God made. Look at the trees. Can you count them? They're in abundance. So you can't tell me nothing. Even if you are, you are in this business and it looks like it's getting and everybody's doing that and all that and you think that your customer base will be shrinking. There's enough people to go around. We are almost 8 billion people on earth. And if you're still selling just your local, your local um, environment, then that's another ball game altogether because it means that you really think that, you know, you are a small, tiny part of the world. The world is abundant, guys. Don't ever be thinking scarce. Oh, you're always afraid. You're always anxious. That thing makes people think, oh, there's not enough money to go around. To go around. So you have to keep struggling to make ends meet. If you don't go out every day, you can't make money. People like that can't do online business because they don't understand, like, how? You want to be indoors on your laptop when people are hustling. Let me go and take my own pie. <laughs> so they think it's by, you know, going to grab what they can, right? Because resources in their mind is scarce. It's scarce. I mean, you can't. They can't believe that the same people who who maybe have said, oh, these things are quite expensive. They will splunge money on the next thing that really, you know, they don't understand human behavior. Anyway, the next thing that you need to expunge from your mindset if you want to make wealth, if you want to make real money, is the mindset of not delaying gratification. These people, they don't know anything about long-term goals. It's not their business. They don't think of anything about the future. Mm -mm, it's not their business. And they will not plan for their retirement, for instance. They won't plan ahead for their children. In fact, some people don't plan for their wife going to give birth. I mean, nine months notice, and they skip. I've had a lot of men, sadly, who just say, oh my God, my wife just gave birth. We don't have enough money to get out of the hospital. And I'm like, okay. So that's 
inability to delay gratification. Whatever they want, they go for it. They spend impulsively. That's a mindset that will lead to poverty. There's no two ways about it. The next one is having negative beliefs around money entirely. Some people believe that money is so stressful. Why are you hustling? Like money has to come with hustle. <laughs> if only I told you some of the things I made money from. Ridiculous. Money, you can make money from simple problems. Solving simple problems. But they don't know. Right? Oh, I will make heaven. If I have too much money. <laughs> <laughs> Negative behaviors around money. Those are things that stop people, some people from not ever, you know, creating wealth. And it's not rocket science. It's just a principle. You can't break through the barrier of something that you're not willing to get out of. Right? Negative beliefs. Oh, money don't grow on trees. So it means scarce. You know, what kinds of taboos and biases and stereotypes around money is very, very limited. For some other people, they don't understand the power of compound interest. You see how I'm doing this channel, for instance, loading the videos up, you know, every week, two or three of them, and I'm going on and on. In my, on my main channel, as of today, which is the 13th of February, 2023, I've done over 164 videos in the last year, one year and a half. And yes, I'm not yet in the YouTube partner program. I haven't even reached out to any brand to, you know, to sponsor or whatever. I've set up my affiliate marketing, yes, but I haven't really got so much traffic to it to make sense. You know what I mean? But I'm not giving up because I believe in the power of compound interest. Keep pushing it, pushing it. The same people are, the, because of that mindset, they don't save. So they say, well, oh, what's the need of saving five naira when what I need is five million? They don't understand the five naira you save today make your make what your money go is less. By the time you say five naira, you don't need five million naira anymore. You have like, you need like four million, four million, nine hundred and something, something, something. You know what I mean? So it's getting less. It's getting less. And compound interest also means people don't believe that, you know, different people can bring small and contribute to a whole. They just believe that, no, there's no need. That, to me, is the best way to even create wealth. Wealth that is consistent, organic. You can't only save money when you have a lot of money. That doesn't make sense. It doesn't work. If you can't save money when you have little, you can't save when you have a lot. But you get my drift, right? Some other people, their own magana, their own worry, their own problem is over-reliance on debt. They must owe people, Sha. To maintain their lifestyle, they must owe people. The worst are the people who have this money, but they would rather owe than to pay up front for whatever they need. Crazy. So they have this cycle of debt all the time. It can lead to more chronic debt that you won't be able to get out of, that can affect somebody's health and sanity in the long run. That way, you can never build wealth. You can't. If everything you need, you know you don't have this, you can't cut your coat according to your size, you can't spend within your budget, you always have to live this lifestyle, you have to buy this thing, you have to do this because other people are doing it. And you do it at the expense of, oh my God, please can you lend me? When you're borrowing, you're so calm. When you're spending, you're so exuberant. And then when you're insulting people who lent you this money in the first place, you're very arrogant about it. You can build wealth. You're not even ready. <laughs> Well, I'm just saying this. I'm not, I'm not talking to members of this community because we understand money, right? <laughs> yes. Other people that uh, actually my mind goes out to them are people who are so conscious of poverty, like they embrace it. So you hear them say things like, ah, oh, it's the rich people. That area is occupied by rich people. A car passes. So it's, oh my God. And it serves as motivation. They are like, that's the rich. Ah, they should let us who are here be. And I'm like, Excuse me. Hey, God. God has no favorites, right? That person that is rich believed that he, he or she needed to be rich and he's done something, you know, worked towards it, put strategies in place, sold their skill, did something. But why would you remove yourself from the world? That, that's the way it seems to me. You're so conscious of poverty that you are not conscious of wealth and abundance at all. That's such a limiting, limiting negative mindset. You have to understand that you can change the story of your life financially by yourself. And that you're a God. You're such a God. Even the Bible says it, that you are God. 
You can't be looking down on yourself and be saying, oh, some people do it with politicians. Oh, those in Asa Rock, those in the White House, eh, they are the ones now, they are life better. They are living a good life. We, we the masses, God forbid, can never be the masses. Never. Not me. P poverty consciousness is crazy. It will keep you limited for a long time. Another one that I was always <laughs> a victim of is never ever budgeting. At least budgeting appropriately. You just assume, 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 spend, spend, spend. So every time you're always at the at a crossroad, like, oh my god, how did I get here? I thought I had this amount the other day. How did it get? Oh my gosh. Then you're buying something that should have been funded with another amount of money and it's just all mixed up. Underestimating the importance of budgeting is crazy. It will leave you broke in, week in, week out, month in, month out. And you know what makes it very funny? Being broke is so generous. <laughs> it, it keeps you wondering. It's very consistent in messing you up. Brokenness? Oh my gosh. <laughs> you have to learn to budget. You have to learn to budget. Um, I've improved a lot, a lot. Or like me, myself, a um, few years ago, I've improved a lot. Now, I, I have like something I put on my room that reminds me of certain things I need to pay off, I need to prioritize, I need to save money, I need to invest, you know, as money comes. Like even this, my lens, I had to budget for me. From a job I did weeks ago, I had to go get my lens, you know, I had to look for money, you know, just put things in, compartment, that, that's a word, you know, know where, which money goes to which. And I've long stopped taking money from my business money. No, I don't do that shit anymore. <laughs> Budgeting is so key. If you don't, you wouldn't know what money should go for what, and you just, your, but your spending would just be crazy, right? That way you can't even keep track. And it's a good skill to learn, trust me. When you begin to budget, you feel more in control. And when you're in control, you're mentally balanced, you know, as well. Right? The next one is this one I've been on about for, you know, days back. Like, not planning for the future. Neglecting to plan for the future can keep you... My country has a way of, you know, giving you sense. Like, the way things are going and the way my... I have had to take care of my parents, with my siblings... And my mom working for the government, almost like slaving for the government for 35 years, retired, six years after, not a dime. If you neglect planning for your future, it's going to be sad. And that involves, you know, retirement savings. That involves emergency funding for, you have to be able to put up money in an account that you don't touch. Except it's an emergency, like a health emergency, you know, accident. Think something that, you know, that you can't but, you know, use the money. Very important. Like I said, I'll do another video about the research I made about the different kind of accounts that uh, we need to keep. Remember, I am not a financial advisor in any way. So this video is purely educating the things I'm learning, the things I'm doing uh, for entertainment. Okay. All right. The next thing that will keep you broke is failing to diversify your investment. Like you just put, you say, okay, they say we should invest and you invest all your money in a particular portfolio. Girl, that's suicide. <laughs> guy that's suicide you can't you know i put my money in different things like invest in a rice farm invest in a motorcycle business invest in a soya bean farm um, invest in stocks i don't have stock yet invest in shares invest in mutual funds another one you know just different things like that you just have to get the best advice and that's why i said a financial advisor is your best bet so don't put your eggs in one basket. It can cut. Hey God, did you recently hear about how Usain Bolt lost millions of dollars in Jamaica? Did you hear about it? If you don't know, just you know what I mean. Just Google. You're gonna find recently. It's crazy. I really feel for him. Like the worst part is the possibility of him getting that money back is, you know, and he's, he lost it through the bank. So imagine leaving your money in the bank is not even safe. It's not even safe. So. You can't ever choose only one route of um, investment. Say, okay, I'm saving for my retirement savings. Then you're putting money in the bank. That's crazy. Oh. Don't try it. The tenth one, which of course is this is not an exhaustive list, is the mindset that you have to work hard before you make money. They lie to you. They lie to you. <laughs> Trust me. If it was about hard work, you know the people that should have been cashing out. Just look around your local market. Those people who are carrying 
heavy load or you know offloading stuff offloading grains in the market do you know how much they are paid every day for lifting those heavy oh my gosh you don't even want to know if it's about hard work then certain people are supposed to be billionaires people who are using their physical strength sweating it out morning till dawn to be able to just cook a meal a pottage a, a pot of soup for their family it's not always about hard work baby hard work it has to be smart work i know you hear this all the time but it's a negative mindset if you believe that oh i need to work hard to come off you should ask the right questions what and what does this entail what do i need to do are there tools to make it better what is the profit on this business for instance does this organization that wants to hire me do they have a promotion plan you know and does it have increments of remuneration those are the questions to ask so being smart making smart decisions taking competitive risk don't just put your money anywhere anyhow don't put your money in ponzi and things that that won't give you back i've, I've lost money myself i've lost money in multi-level marketing i lost money in ponzi so i can tell you for free i can okay so believing the hard work is what will bring wealth you'll be so disappointed right you have to have a strategic plan ask the right questions ask the right people don't ask uh, passerbys and and um, relatives about a financial investment ask a financial advisor i see all the time on the internet people lose money even in people's comment section oh then we lost money we thought it was you replying us asking us to go to telegram and all those see you're not ready if you're easy to part with money then you, you, you should consider you know rethinking what you think about money really okay there's no way you go through throwing away all of this mindset you will not be on your path to creating abundance right asking the right questions approaching the right professionals and setting a goal that will work remember again whatever you do invest in things that you are sure about invest in businesses that will make you come alive learn to monetize the things that come to you naturally from your skill talent and stuff if you're able to monetize the things you can do for free that's the sweet spot girl that's the sweet spot guys okay make sure that you are financially um, alert and be amazing while at it remember at the end of the day the goal is to be happy and to contribute to other people's lives while we have our lives up together remember even in the plane you have to save yourself first with a mask before you can save another person okay remain your girl cheese so see you